Okay, let's talk a little bit about substance abuse and family. Uh, one of the questions that, that was posed to me is, how does substance abuse affect the family? And that is such a, a broad question and affects families in so many different ways. So I'll definitely do my best to, to share some experiences with what I've seen and, and you know, just, just how families handle this kind of thing. So I'll, I'll start with thinking about um, the times that I'll have people who are in college and they're sent to me because um, their parents think that they have a substance abuse problem. And, you know, let's, let's say that, that the, the, college, the college kid comes in and she says, well, it's not really much of a problem. You know, I just party on the weekends. I just have a, have a good time and all this kind of stuff. So, so it's very minimized. And so, you know, I'm trying to be a fair therapist here and figure out, okay, well, are the parents overreacting? Is there really anything to this? And once I talk with the parents, they describe how her behavior is affecting the family. And, uh, and, you know, what's commonly said is, well, our daughter is, um, you know, her grades are slipping, you know, she was a very good student, and then she, she went to college, and then grades started to go down, and so we're really worried about her. Um, there might be arrests, there might not be arrests, and nonetheless, it's all this worry that the parents have and the family is not functioning very well as a result because they're like okay we've spent all this money to send our daughter off to college and we just see her slowly sinking and i've seen instances where you know the the parents are just so so sick about it that they can't really function very much in their in their daily lives and then as a result they are like doing all this research trying to figure out you know what can they do to to stop to stop this problem and um you know, there, there's times that the parents have to, to swoop in and uh, take, take their, their child out of, out of college and to take them to a treatment facility if they have to do something like that. Uh, that's more on the extreme side, but it, it definitely happens. Um, then if we look at all of the serious money that that costs, and depending on the, on the person, you know, 20, 30, Forty thousand dollars at a treatment facility is is not uncommon, and um, you know sometimes there's insurance to pay for that. Other times there's not. So I see families that are devastated just simply as a result of the the financial burden that that occurs there. Sometimes families are lucky enough that um, that the child is taken care of and and you know gets back and everything's good. Other times it's just reoccurring. So that's like a common uh, college type of situation that I'll see. Sometimes uh, more, more minor is that um, the parents will, will talk with me just how do we cope with the stress? What do we do to, to help our child? And it's not nearly as severe, but they're definitely quite worried about it. Maybe there's family fights about, you know, some family members think that this should happen. Other family members think that the opposite should happen. Um, so, so it's, it's just quite disruptive. So that's something that I, I commonly see, um, in families of, of college age people. In the extreme situations, I, I have seen uh, the child die as a result, and then you have this grieving family, and then maybe there's uh, siblings in the family who they actually then start to turn to substances to try to feel better, and then the addiction pattern continues. I've seen that a, a handful of times in my career, unfortunately. So... If we look at let's let's say like a, a typical working family let's let's look at them for example so um, here in Indiana there's a lot of factory work so so we'll just we'll just take that for example and you know how would let's just say it's like the stereotypical um, a dad that's a factory worker let's say that he drinks too much he works hard all day 
he's sore from working hard and just really stressed out and he comes home and he drinks too much. And so how does that affect the family? Well, often um, I end up talking with the children and let's say maybe they're teenagers of the, uh, of the father who drinks too much and they're in my office saying, dad doesn't care about me, dad doesn't pay very much attention, there's all this stress in the household, um, mom yells at dad because he drinks too much, and then dad gets really upset, and dad has anger problems, he's unpredictable when he's drinking, he has a lot of anger, rage, maybe he'll tear up the house, something like that. So that's, that is a really common thing that I see, and we're we're looking at teaching the kids, okay, this is what this is what a marriage is. Because remember, when you're a kid, you don't know what you don't know what life is. The only life that you know is what's right there in front of you. So you think this is normal. You think, well, you know, you get married, uh, dad drinks too much, mom yells at dad, and that's just kind of how that is. So it's it's uh, marriage not being modeled very well to the to the child or the children. That's one thing, and that's how it can get passed on through the uh, through the generations. Is that uh, the children see this, then they grow up to repeat the same the same example, and then it goes on from there. So that is a, a common thing that happens, and um, that would definitely be a, a significant way that families are affected. So I see that happen. Um, there isn't always violence in, in drinking, and sometimes it's just simply the absent father. He goes to the garage and he drinks, and he just kind of, you know, uh, piddles around out in the garage and that kind of thing, and nobody ever sees him. So that might be another another piece that happens. Of course, moms might be the ones that have the drinking problem and not the dads. And um, that that happens plenty. It's you hear less about it, but nonetheless, it it is actually quite common. It's just not not spoken about so much. And just remember that when someone drinks too much, often they lose their emotions, uh, their ability to control those emotions, they lose their judgment, uh, things are worse in, the, in that situation. So if you think about like the classic holidays, family reunions, and that kind of thing, uh, that would be another way that substance abuse will affect families. So. I'm sure that all of you have heard plenty of the examples of, well, I'm not going to go to the family get-together because everybody uses whatever substance. You know, alcohol is the one that talk, that's talked about, but nonetheless, there's plenty of families that they use uh, marijuana, pills, whatever it is, all kinds of other stuff. And there's fights that, that ensue or just simply, uh, you know, arguments or tension in the family or something like that. So often families are broken apart because of the substance use and they don't want to be around each other. And then when they do get around each other, then there are these, uh, you know, again, these fights, these arguments that, that, that do erupt. And those are the obvious pieces about the holidays that we always hear about. But nonetheless, in my office, I, I think that the holidays begin probably as early as June or July, unfortunately. And the, the reason that I say this is that I talk with people who they're coming in and it's summertime, it's hot out, and they're talking about Christmas time and about how they're dreading it. And it's really sad because they're saying, okay, I want to be with my family. I want you know, I, I want this to be a good holiday season, but nonetheless, I know that all of the drinking, all of the pot smoking that goes on, I know what it's going to turn into, and I can't connect with my family. So that is a really common thing that I hear, and if you think about it, to, to start that worry, you know, in the hot weather when summer is just starting, that's another way that substance abuse affects even extended family. So 
it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. And, um, you know, I try to help my clients to, to deal with those types of situations. As far as other ways that sub substance abuse affects families, um, I would say just as far as like enabling, that would be, that would be one example. So if you think about someone that's an enabler, that that means well pretty much like what it sounds that that the person or the group of, of persons help the person who is abusing substances by giving them money covering for them so let's say that that they're hung over and they'll call their work and bail them out make up stories for them and things like that so that's another way that substance abuse affects families is because you have the substance abuser on this side and then you have the enabler on the other side and the enabler is stressed out and doing everything that they can to try to protect the person who's abusing that subs those substances. Uh, they're protecting them from the consequences. So this prolongs the substance abuse. Uh, the substance abuser doesn't have, doesn't suffer the, the consequences to their use, and it goes on and on and on until the law gets involved, until they have a significant health problem, um, something of that nature. So that's another piece that I see. And then if you have, uh, you know, other children in the family, they are pushed to the back because they're not paid attention to because it's all about the person that's abusing the substance. So, you know, you have the lost, the lost children as a result, um, you know, and, and there's all these different roles that a family can take, and I won't go into all, all those pieces. But nonetheless, uh, you know, you can go Google the, the family roles of, of a substance abusing family, and, uh, and you'll, you'll see all of those. So it's really unfortunate about how it can tear a family apart uh, financially, emotionally, uh, legally, if you get the, get the law involved. Not only is it the financial aspect, but having to submit to maybe house arrest or jail or something like that. So those are, those are common problems that my, my clients deal with. And, you know, I've had plenty of people who have been on house arrest. And so, you know, you're, you're punishing, uh, you know, the person in the family that, that is, you know, say got a DUI, but the whole family is being punished because, you know, let's say it's mom that got the DUI. And as a result, you're not able, the whole family isn't able to come and go as they please because mom's on house arrest. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a downer for everyone involved. So it kind of the whole family becomes imprisoned to, to some degree. So I see that happen pretty often. So those are the, the significant pieces of, uh, of how substance abuse hurts the family. And if you just look at the emotional toll, I mean, no one wants to see their loved one go through all of this. So that's really common that uh, that the love that the loved ones have their own depression, their own anxiety, stress, their own problems as a result, and they may turn to unhealthy ways of coping, and and may have their own substance abuse as a result. So, I see that on a very regular basis. So those are are some of the ways that families are affected. Nonetheless, I, I don't mean for this to be comprehensive, but I, I thought maybe if I could share a, a few a few stories of, of what I deal with on a regular basis, um, that might be helpful. Okay.